everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Maui Blossom dishcloth. This is a really fun dishcloth to make. We're making little flower motifs, and then we're going to be using the join-as-you-go technique to connect them all together. I had fun kind of mixing up the colors and placing the flowers. Now, if you haven't joined us yet for our summer crochet along, this is part of the Summer of Dishcloths crochet along. We're going to be making a new dishcloth every week in the month of July and August. So we're into August already, and this is the, um, the next one in our lineup, if you will. So today I'm going to show you how to crochet these little flower motifs, and then we're going to learn how to switch colors. So I have, these are all two color flowers, and then we're going to learn how to do the join as you go technique, and we're going to encounter a variety of uh, different situations where we're going to be joining together, but we're going to walk through the whole thing together. The finished dishcloth measures about eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and it can really be turned any which way you like. And Again, this is a really fun dishcloth to make. One thing I wanted to mention before we get started is to join our Ravelry Crochet Along group. The link is down below for that, and this is a community of makers where we're all working on the crochet along, and you can get opinions about the colors, you can get help, you can show off your work, and also use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to share your work on social media. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started on this beautiful Maui Blossom dishcloth. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to measure as you go along with any project. We're going to be using the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook for this dishcloth and every other dishcloth in our crochet along as a side note. And then the two colors I'm going to be using today are these pretty kind of tropical colors. This is the Scrubby Smoothie. We've been using this for our dishcloths all along and each ball of this is 153 yards. However, you're not gonna be using all of the yarn. You're gonna have some leftovers. And fortunately, we're using this yarn for our entire crochet along, so you'll be able to use it for other projects as well. But you'll need two colors for this project um, to make your blooms. And we're gonna be using the bright pink and the aqua. So I thought those were really pretty together, but you can use any colors you like. Please feel free, and it's really fun to see all the different colors that you use as well. So we're going to begin by making the first full flower, and then we're going to be adding uh, flowers onto that first flower uh, using the join-as-you-go method to bring them all together into one piece. So let's make the first full flower together. I have some of the parts over here, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So my first flower is going to have a blue center, and then we're going to do pink petals. So what we want to do is put a slip knot on our hook. Now let me just zoom in a little bit so we can see better. What we're going to do is wrap the yarn around our fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. So now we need to make a ring that we'll be working the stitches into. We're going to be working in the round. So what we want to do is chain four. So wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to join in the farthest chain from the hook to create the ring. So insert the hook into that farthest chain from the hook, that first chain you made, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook, and now we have our ring. If you prefer the magic ring, uh, definitely feel free to use that instead. We're also going to hold this tail along the edges we work so that we can weave it in as we go along. So the next thing we're going to do is chain four. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to create some spokes on our little wheel here. So what we're going to do is work a double crochet chain one 11 times. This chain four counts as a double crochet chain one just as a side note. So double crochet chain one 11 times. So to make a double crochet wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, now bring that, uh, now wrap yarn around hook, bring through the first two loops, Yarn around hook, bring through the last two loops if you're not familiar with a double crochet. Next, we're going to chain one. Okay, so we're going to do that for a total of 11 times. So that was one, and then, whoops, and then two, double crochet, chain one, holding that tail along the edge, and then we're going to go three, double crochet, chain one. 
four, double crochet, chain one, sliding things over as needed. So far we have one, two, three, four, five. Work your chain one. Don't forget to do the chain ones in between. And then this is six. And seven. All right, eight. Double crochet, chain one. Nine. Crochet, chain one, ten, and eleven. Double crochet and chain one. Now we're going to join to close the round. So, what we want to do is uh, remember before I said the chain four counts as the double crochet chain one. We're going to count three chains up, even though there's four chains. We're going to count one, two, three chains up because we want to keep that last chain intact to create that space in between our double crochets. And we're going to join with a slip stitch. stitch. So insert your hook, bring up a loop. Remember that third chain up. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And now we have the center of our first flower. So what we're going to do now, because we're going to switch colors. Now if you don't want to switch colors, you don't have to do this part. But we're going to snip the yarn and we're going to switch over to the pink. So wrap yarn round hook and just pull it through. Just like that, okay? Now what I like to do now at this point is that, remember that tail we wove in as we went? Grab that tail and give it a very strong tug to kind of close up that center hole. And then you can snip that so it's kind of out of your way. This tail here, we're going to weave this one in as we go on the next round. So let's get started with our petals. We're going to need to grab the pink yarn for this part. So with your second color, you want to join the new color into any of these spaces. So remember those chain ones we did? Those created spaces. Those are all in between these double crochets. So insert your hook into any of the spaces and bring the new yarn through. Now if you want to stick with the same color, that's totally fine. Instead of fastening off, you just want to slip stitch over to the first space to get yourself in the right spot. So any of these spaces all the way around, you want to tie your new yarn. Just get a nice little knot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold that tail along the edge and then when we get to this tail we're going to hold that along the edge and that'll help us weave those in because we're going to be doing several of these flowers so we we're going to have lots of ends and weaving them in as you go is a little bit easier on yourself in the long run so reinsert your hook once you've tied that on reinsert your hook back into that space bring up a loop and then we're going to chain three one two three and then to make this first petal we're going to work three double crochets into that same space okay so one two and three okay so then what we're going to do, we have our first little petal now, is into the next space we're going to work a slip stitch. That's going to create that rounded and that divot that we need uh, in between each petal. So we're still holding that tail along the edge and we're going to work a slip stitch. So into the next space, insert your hook into that space, bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and then we slip stitch. Okay. So in the next space, we're going this time to work four double crochet because that chain three at the beginning counted as one of our double crochets. So for each of uh, the next uh, petals all the way around, we're going to be doing four double crochets for our petals. Okay, so work four double crochet. One, two, three, and four. Just like that. Okay, now as you can see we got that little dip now. 
All right, let's get a little bit more yarn here. Next space, work that slip stitch. Next space, work four double crochet. So one, two, whoops, three, and four. Whoops, my tail's getting in the way there. Okay, so we're starting to get some really nice little flower petals. Next space, now you can hold that tail as long as you need to. When you're done, you can kind of drop it. Next space, work your slip stitch to differentiate those petals. Um, I'm gonna drop the pink tail because I'm approaching this blue tail now. We're gonna hold that one instead. It's been sufficiently woven in. So in our next space, we're gonna do once again, work four double crochet, one, whoops, hold that tail, two, three, and four. Okay, then we're going to work a slip stitch into our next space. We're holding that blue tail now, or whatever tail you have when you get to it. And then in the next space, work your four double crochet. One, two, three, and four. Next space, work your slip stitch. Next space, work your four double crochet. One, two, get a little bit more yarn here. Three, and four. Next space, work your slip stitch. And now we're back where we started. So to close the round, what we're going to do is work a slip stitch in the base of that first petal. So as you can see, remember that chain three we did? That very bottom chain, just work a slip stitch to close the round. It's at the very base of that petal, okay? So now our first flower is complete and it's super tropical and cheerful looking and we're gonna just fasten off, okay? So we need a complete flower to begin. So what you wanna do, um, I like to do this as I go along. All those tails that you wove in, give those a little tug and just trim those off at this time. It'll really help you out later when they're sort of out of the way. Okay, so flower one is complete. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of lay it right here because we're gonna start on our next flower and as we come around and work these petals, we're gonna be joining them. So I wanted to mix up the colors a little bit. I went ahead and made the centers. The centers are always made the same way. So round one, the center, that little circle that we made, they're always made the same way. So we're gonna be mixing up the pink and the blue. Now you can make all your flowers the same, um, but I wanted to mix up the centers. So some of my flowers will have a blue center with pink petals, like you see here. Some of my flowers will have a pink center with blue petals, and that's why I made some pink centers. And we're gonna mix them up a little bit. Now, um, try not to laugh, but I did make a little, uh, <laughs> little pictorial of how I'm gonna lay out my flowers. So we have the first one here with the pink. I, the outer edge, I designated as pink one here. So our next one, we're gonna do with a pink center and blue petals, okay? So each row we, I have to, I guess because I'm a visual person, I have to see it laid out. So I did pink, blue, pink, and then the next row, blue, pink, blue, pink, blue, pink. So it's all mixed up. There's never two of the same color side by side, okay? So here's my little drawing. And so what we're gonna do next is grab, whoops, grab a pink center and our blue yarn. And we're gonna learn how to join these together. So each one of our petals has four double crochets. So we're gonna be joining in the center of each petal. There's an even number of double crochets, so that gives us a nice center on that, okay? 
So what we want to do is, I already made the center, so you, if you need to see that again, just simply back up the video to where I made this, the center here. And then we're going to give this center tail a nice tug and trim that off, and we're ready to go. So what we need to do next is grab our blue yarn, and we're going to kind of keep this one nearby because we're going to join it at some point. Okay, so we want to do the same thing, and I always go the opposite of the other tail just so it doesn't get too bulky, but we're going to insert the hook into any of those, remember those chain one spaces? Insert the hook in any of those chain one spaces, bring the new yarn through, and then we're just going to tie it right on there. Now again, you can do these in any color combination you like. I wanted to use the same two colors, but sort of mix it up a little bit. Okay, so we're ready to roll once again. Insert your hook into that chain uh, one space where you tied it on, bring up a loop, and then chain three. We're gonna start the flower the same exact way. So one, two, three, and then we're going to work our three double crochets, because remember that chain three counts as one of our double crochets. So we're only working three double crochets into this first one. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, and into the next space, we're going to work a slip stitch. Remember to get that nice petal shape. And then what we're gonna do is grab our flower because we're going to join our flower on. Okay, now as you can see, our flower has six petals. One, two, three, four, five, six. There is a top petal and a bottom petal, two side petals on either side of your flower, okay? So where our joins are gonna be made on these two side petals here, okay? So let's get started on the petal. This will become the top petal of this flower. Okay, so we just did our slip stitch. So work two double crochets, one and two. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different. Normally we would just work our four double crochets, but we're gonna make half the petal and then we're gonna join. So in between this petal here, this is the petal we're gonna be joining onto. So go in between this uh, petal into this space here. So you can see if we split it in half and we're gonna go into the top of that petal then we're going to grab our yarn and we're going to reach back and scoop it up, bring it through like that. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and our petal is joined. Next, might be a little fiddly, we're going to work two double crochets into that seam space to finish off our petal. Okay, so one and two. Next space, work your slip stitch. We're gonna kind of do the same thing we were doing before. So work that slip stitch. And now let's work the other petal that we're gonna be joining. So remember there were two petals on the side. So next, work two double crochets. So one and two. And then, let me grab a little bit more yarn here. Okay, so get our flower straightened out. And then our next petal, we're gonna go in between there again, go in from the top, reach back and scoop up that yarn and bring it through. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and then finish off the petal working two double crochets. Okay, so one, whoops, one, my yarn's splitting a little bit, there we go, and two, And then we've made our joins. You might need to straighten things out a bit, but we've made our joins. So now we're just gonna finish up the flower as we normally would, okay? So you can work your slip stitch into the next space. And we're approaching some tails here. So anytime you come to a tail, just weave that in as you go. So the next space, four double crochet, one, two, three, 
and 4. Next space, work that slip stitch. We're going to look at our handiwork in just a moment to see all this stuff we've been doing here. We haven't stopped and looked yet. So work your four double crochet in the next space. We're just finishing up the flower the same way we did when we did that first flower. So one, two, three. My yarn ball is sort of following me around here. So one, two, three, and four. Next space, work your slip stitch. And then work your four double crochet, making that very last petal. You should always make sure you have six petals total. If you end up with a different number, you may have to go back and look at what happened. Okay, so that was three and four double crochet. Okay. And then that last space, work your slip stitch. And then join to close the round. Remember in the base of that first petal you made? Right in the base of that chain, join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay? So let me get everything out of the whoops, let me get everything out of the way here. I got stuff walking on over. Uh, I'm gonna get my hook out of the way, and we can look at our flowers. So we have a pink flower and a blue flower so far, okay? And we joined in those two side petals. So we actually, this was our first flower, it's actually up, I'm holding it upside down. So for the next, if we come back to our little drawing here, we've done this pink one, which is here, this blue one, which is here. We're gonna join either this one or this one, it's up to you. Um, I think let's move downward because, because we have six petals, when you go across, you'll be joining in the sides. But if you look at this flower, there's just one petal down here. So let's do that one because that's um, sort of each situation uh, that I wanted to show you. So our next flower, if we look at our drawing, will be one of these again. Okay, so grab a pink center. Now you can make yours ahead of time like I did, or you can just kind of make them as you go along. Oh, but first, what we need to do is fasten off on this blue one. You will have some tails to weave in with your tapestry needle at the end. So that's why it's good to, as many tails as you can, weave those in as you go along, okay? So now we have two flowers. We're gonna scoot this up here for just a moment. And let's grab our blue yarn again, because I wanna show you the other join that we're gonna do when you're just joining into one petal. It's the same thing, you just, once you start building this up a little bit, and it might be helpful to make your own little sketch, um, but once you start building this up a little bit, it'll uh, be much more uh, easy to see, I guess you could say. Okay, so once again, let's uh, trim that tail from the center. Give it a nice tug to close up that center a little bit. And then we're going to insert our hook into any of those chain one spaces, bring the new yarn through. We're doing the same thing we did before. And then you're just going to tie that new yarn on. Now we're only joining one petal on this one. And then we're just gonna tie that right on. Okay, so let's hold that tail along the edge and we're gonna get one petal started and then join the next one. I like to do one full one before I start joining. It just, there's a lot going on because you're doing the chain three and then, you know, it just, I like to make one full petal. Just a personal preference. So once again, chain three. One, two, three. Remember that counts as our uh, first double crochet here. Work three double crochets into that same space, that first space. So one, and yarn splitting again. So uh, Cotton yarn, the plies are, are very smooth and sometimes they come apart a little bit. Okay, so that was one, two, And three. Next space, work your slip stitch. I'm going to create that differentiation of those petals. Okay, and then in the next space, what we're going to do, I'm still holding that tail along the edge. The next space, we're going to work two double crochet. So one and two. And now we're ready to join our flower onto our ever growing dishcloth. So we're gonna join it onto this one here, because remember we're doing the blue petals this time. So what we wanna do is go into this bottom petal, 
and look for the center. So in between those double crochets, it's going to go right in the middle there. Go in through the top, reach back and scoop up the yarn. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and then work two double crochets to finish the petal. Now I had somebody ask me one time, so I go in from the top to do my joins to when, when I scoop up that yarn. Some people like to go in from underneath. That is a completely uh, personal preference. If you go in from the bottom, definitely feel free to do that, um, however you like to do it. I've always just done it from the top for some reason. <laughs> okay, so next we're going to join, I mean, I'm sorry, work a slip stitch into the next space. And as you can see, our, our petals have been joined. Next space, work your four double crochet. And we're just gonna do the same thing to finish off the flower. So one, I'll go a little faster because we've done this before. Two, three, and four. Let me scoot all this out of the way. Okay, next space, work your slip stitch. I'm still weaving those tails in as I go. Next space, work your four double crochet. So one, two, three, and four. I have to say, this is looking very cheerful, all these pretty flowers. Okay, we can drop this tail because we've uh, come to another tail. Work a slip stitch in the next space. Work four double crochet, one, two, three, and four. Slip stitch in the next space. I'm still holding that tail that I picked up a second ago. And four double crochet into the next space. One, two, three, and four. And then our last space, same thing we've been doing, work your slip stitch and then join to close the round at the base of that first petal, that bottom chain. I have to wiggle it in there. Okay, and then join with a slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so our next flower, our third flower already is complete. So you're just gonna fasten off and pull tight to close. Okay. Now, at this time, if you'd like to stop and snip some of these tails, you know, it gets pretty um, yarny looking until you start weaving those in. Okay, so I showed you both joins. So what we're gonna do is keep joining our flowers. Now, if you're going across, those are gonna have these two joins on the side petals. So our next flower here, if we look at our little drawing, will be the pink petals. So we want to grab a blue center and work the pink yarn around, joining at those two petals. Now when you're joining a flower upward like this, you're going to join into uh, the one petal in the bottom and the two on the side. So our next flower we're going to do is going to have several joins because we're working into three flowers now. So we're going to join here I'm going to show you the last scenario, if you will. Um, it'll have a blue center because we're, you know, working into these that have pink centers. We look at our, we've done this one, this one, and this one, and I'm going to show you this middle one because this one has three joins. And then I've shown you all the possible scenarios that you can run into when you're joining these. Now, if you want to make it bigger than my nine flower grid, you, of course, can, you know, do that as well. If you want to make it a little scrubby, you can just do four, okay? So let's join this last flower, and I'm going to show you, we're going to do a join here at the bottom, and then two side joins. So we need the pink yarn this time. And then once we do this part together, you'll be able to handle any of the other flowers that come your way, okay? So what we're going to do is, once again, pull that center. Um, I've pre-made my center, so once again, if you need to see that, 
um, back up the video to where I did that first flower. It's the same thing. Uh, insert your hook into any of those chain one spaces. Bring the new yarn through. I always go the opposite of the other tail to kind of cut down on the bulk a little bit of weaving those tails as you go along. And then just tie that yarn right on. And once again, I like to make the first petal all by itself with no joins just to get me started. Insert your hook back into that chain one space, bring up a loop, and I'm going to keep this nearby because we're going to do a join almost immediately. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then work your three double crochets into that first space. Remember that first space only has three because of that chain three. So one, use that, two, and three. Next space, work your slip stitch to get that little divot in between. And now we're ready to join our petal. So work your first two double crochets into that next space. One and two. And then we're going to just get a little bit more yarn here. Just, I like to keep everything laid on the table so it's in the right position. So this petal here is the one we're going to join. Go in the center of it, so in between those two double crochets. Reach back, scoop up the yarn, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And finish off that petal by working two double crochets. One. And two. Okay, slip stitch into the next space. Okay, and uh, because we're working to three, it's getting a little snug in here. So what we're going to do is work, uh, begin our next petal, because our next petal is going to have a join as well. So work two double crochet, one and two. Okay, now locate the petal that you're going to be joining. And it's getting a little bit uh, heavy on the ends here, but it's okay. So that's going to be this petal here, this side petal. Okay, so go in between those two double crochets, reach back, scoop up the yarn, and bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And we need to turn a little bit. I know we've been laying it the way we've been doing, but you might need to turn as you work. And then just work two double crochets into that seam space to finish off the petal. So one and two. Okay. Then we're going to work a slip stitch and then we're going to join again. Okay. So we have our next petal that we're going to join to. So work in that next space. Let me get all my, my ends situated here. Work two double crochet, one and two. Okay, then we're going to do our last join here. So locate that petal, which is right here. Locate the middle, which is right here. And we're going to go in from the top, reach back and scoop up that yarn. Bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And then work two double crochets into that seam space. So one, whoops, and two, I keep like splitting my yarn here, and this is my second double crochet. Okay, we can straighten things out in just a bit. Sometimes when you do your joins, everything looks really like opened, um, and it doesn't look like a solid petal, but uh, that'll all straighten out when we're finished. Okay, slip stitch into the next space and work four double crochets into the next space. So one, two, three, and four. Just like that. 
And then in the next space, we're just going to finish our flower the same way we've been working it to finish it off. Next space, I did a, a slip stitch in that next space. And then in the next space, work four double crochet. One, two, three, and four. And then in the next space, work your slip stitch. And then we're going to join at the base of that petal, that bottom chain, to close the round. Okay? Make sure that you go in both loops there. There we go. Okay. And we're going to slip stitch to close the round. Okay, so let's look at what we've done so far. We uh, started here with our first flower and we joined into those two side petals. Then we added one below it, and because we have six petals, we joined just once in the center. Now we went across here and we had a situation where we had to join into two different flowers so we joined there and on the sides. Okay, So now you've had every uh, situation if you will and we're going to keep adding our flowers. Now if we go back to our little drawing here we've done these first four flowers here. I'm going to continue and add one more flower here, here, and then another row across the bottom. Okay. So keep adding your flowers. I'm going to make my nine flowers uh, large. You can, of course, add more or less. It's totally up to you. That's the, the beauty of the join as you go. Now, as you do uh, join your flowers, just sort of straighten them out as you go. Snip those tails as you go. I'm getting ready to deal with these ends before I join more flowers on. So we're going to rejoin in just a moment and have the rest of our flowers kind of hooked on to our dishcloth and then I'm going to show you how to do the finished work when you're finished, okay? So let's keep going with our flower joins, and then we'll rejoin in just a moment and finish up our dishcloth. So all of our little flowers have been joined, and I have to say I really love the way this turned out. The last thing we need to do is if you have any ends, now if you wove the ends in as you went along, they would be sort of tucked under and you can just snip those. Some of the ones where we ended the round uh, will be on the edges, so with a knot. So what we'll have to do is take our tapestry needle and weave those in on our own. So just go in one direction. I think we did this a little bit earlier in the video, but you just want to take your needle just in the back. Make sure you're on the back side of the motifs. And then just go in one direction and then come back in the other direction to lock this into place and then you can just snip. I already did all the other ones but I saved one so I could show you. And our dishcloth is complete. One more thing I want to mention before um, we end the video is that when you're joining these motifs be very careful that the side, the right side, is all facing up. Um, the back of these motifs looks a little bit different. It has a much different look. It definitely has a front and a back on this one. So and you know, as you're joining them, just make sure they're all facing upward so that they all have that nice uniform look. Another thing I've had several people ask during this entire crochet along is when they make these dishcloths, they feel like, you know, maybe they're too pretty to use. And that's perfectly fine. These can be used for lots of things. You can make these for gifts. You can place a beautiful candle or a vase on top of these as a little, um, almost like a modern doily. So really, you can use these for whatever you want, and they are very versatile. Not They don't really need to be strictly dishcloths. So that's um, I just wanted to mention that, too, because I have had that question uh, frequently during our crochet along. The last thing, too, is if you're not a member of the Ravelry Crochet Along group, I'll put the link down below. Hop on over there. That's our forum of makers, and it's a place where you can get opinions, ask questions, get help. There's a lot of uh, people who do the helping over there. You can show off your colors, etc. I cannot wait to see all the colors that you choose for this particular dishcloth. And my little drawing that I've been showing throughout this video, that uh, as little and silly as it is, um, it does match our color scheme here. So if you need to make yourself a little drawing, definitely feel free to do that. It certainly helped me as I was doing my joins. So hop on over to the group. Use the Fiberflux Cal hashtag when sharing your work as well if you're on social media. So that is the Maui Blossom Dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.